sir, yes sir, what it do gang, we live, we back, welcome, welcome back, y'all know who it is man, it's me, Chandler Blakely, your host, aka Goose, here bringing you another edition of this starting five for DraftKings and Fan Duel on this Saturday morning, evening, afternoon, whenever you watching it, what's up, hope everything good with you, we on here talking DFS man. You in the right spot. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn your notification bell on so you can be here rocking with us every day when the video drops. And you know, hit that like button for your boy, man. It's just a small gesture of kindness. We need more kindness in the world, man. Be more kind. Start with hitting that like button, all right? Let's do that, all right? Let's get to it, man. Last night, very solid night across both sites, man. If you caught them starting fives, you know I blazed y'all last night now. All right, let's get to it, man. At, uh, on DraftKings, this is a $12 single entry. We came in 97th place, winning 30 bucks, put up 324, my best lineup. If you caught the starting five yesterday on DraftKings, you know I went with Jamal Murray, Karish LeVert, Dante DiVincenzo, Julius Randle, and Kevin Looney, all right? Now, uh, yesterday it was just a case of so much value, man. When, once all those Warriors players got moved out, you still had uh, value on other guys. It was just a lot of value. So I kind of wanted to lock in on the guys I wanted, the guys I really wanted to get to, and then just uh, circle through the uh, value options in different lineups. So this is my best lineup here. At the top, I had Darius Garland, 51%. Everybody's chalk, I told you. No Donovan Mitchell. You can just continue to play him as long as Donovan Mitchell is out. He gave you 50 fantasy points. Same thing with Karis LeVert, 57% on. Gave you right at 38 fantasy points. Very solid outing from him. <coughs> uh, Dante DiVincenzo, 39% on. Knew he was going to be chalky. Him with Poole, all those Warriors guys was going to be the the value play du jour. So, wanted to get to Dante DiVincenzo. You've been watching this channel. You know I stay rolling with DiVincenzo. 38 fantasy points. Julius Randle here, he should have had a much bigger game, man. Fair solid from him, 52 fantasy points, but he only played like 32 minutes, 33 minutes. If he plays normal 36, 37, we easily get a 60-plus burger from him right here in Randle, or from Randle right here. But we'll take it, man. Still solid. I expected a little bigger from him, but he didn't get all the minutes I thought he was going to get, all right? And then y'all know me, man. Kevin Looney, when it's a team where everybody has to play, all the value, guys, Give me the one that nobody's playing. I went Kevin Looney here. The the Warriors only had like, what, eight, nine bodies? I don't know. A lot of them was coming back from injuries. I know they couldn't get full run, so I knew Looney was going to have to play. Looney's a solid fantasy performer per minute, and if he got 30-plus minutes, I knew it was a good chance he can give you a big number, and that's what happened, man. Got him at 1.5% on. Gave us 39 fantasy points, man. Nice out for him. Only four real-life points. Man has 17 boys, man. I wish he could have got me, found me six more points and got me the double-double bonus. He really would have probably put up a 50-burger there, but very solid out and at 1% on. Cannot be mad at that. Jamal Murray got him in there. We're just hoping on Jokic being out. That's what we got. We got the news that Jokic was out, and Jamal Murray just went on and put on a show, man. Triple-double, filling in for his uh, sidekick or his compadre. You know, Jokic, he held it down, 58 fantasy points. Then O'Shea Brissett got me again. Got me again. And when we got that uh, pace of starting lineup, I knew I wanted uh, – well, this was actually – I actually finished this lineup. It was Murray, I forget who this was, and Walker Kessler. But when we saw that starting lineup and saw Brousset was starting, <coughs> I thought he could be a sneaky value player that nobody would go to. And if he was starting, I expect he would see approach 30 minutes. That was not the case. O'Shea Brousset, man, let us down right here. Only six fantasy points, man. Crushed this lineup. We could have had a much bigger performance, but only six points from him. Aaron Gordon, just wanted to get to all those Denver Nuggets guys with no Jokic over there. Opened up everything for everyone on that squad. Got him at 19% on. He gave us 42 fantasy points. Nice, solid outing for him. And then let's go look at FanDuel, man. Had another sweat. 384. Came in 158th place. This is the 222-20 max, but it was uh, the 20, it was 25 max yesterday. So I told you sometimes this contest varied up. I like this little contest on FanDuel. Put up 384. If you caught the starting five over here, you know I gave you Darius Garland, Kyrie Irving, Dante DiVincenzo, Julius Randle, and, and uh, Kevin Looney once again. Oh, was this a bonus? One of them. But anyway, 
at the top, Ty Jerome, 26% off. He gave you a 40 burger, man. Very solid outing for him. Darius Garland, of course. Moses Moody let me down. Got him at 3%. Like I said, once again, just me trying to get to those Warriors plays that I figured had to play at least 20 minutes or some along those lines or more and just give me the ones nobody was getting to. So I went Moses Moody here, 3%. Didn't quite work out. Only 11 fantasy points. Uh, Kyrie Irving smashed. 17% off. I told you in yesterday's video, man, you can just dial him up, man. 81 per. I told you they had to win. I told you he was going to come out aggressive. They need wins. They haven't They haven't won since KD has went down. I knew he was going to try to lead him. That's what he did here. 81 fantasy points for him. Major at 18% on. Uh, Dante DiVincenzo once again, 51%, 38 fantasy points. Got a little Chris Duarte in here. This was this not no insight or nothing. This uh, I love the rest of my lineup, and this is all the salary I had left. So, And it was the only guy I felt a little comfortable with, so I just got Chris Duarte in here at 0.8% on. He was solid, though. Gave us 25 fantasy points right here for like 3,800. I think it was his price tag over here. Julius Randle, of course, once again, 14% on, gave us 49 fantasy points. Kevin Looney crushed for us at 7% on, man, 42 fantasy points. Then got the Sabonis down here at the bottom. Triple dub for Sabonis as well, man, 48 uh, fan duel points from him. So there you have it, man, my best lineup, 384 over here, came in 158th place. Let's get to today's six gamer, man, and see what I got cooking for y'all. This six gamer is going to have a lot of injury news we waiting on, man. But at the top, give me Terry Rozier, 7,600. Pretty sure LaMelo Ball is out. That's one thing. It's a lot of questionable tags, Harden, uh, Giannis, Mitchell, all them once again. But I'm pretty sure LaMelo is out out of all those guys. And Terry Rozier, he's probably going to be a little chalky. Uh, I don't think this game has a total on it. I know Atlanta's favored by eight or something like that, but it doesn't have an over uh, a game total on it. But I like Terry Rozier. He's probably going to be somewhat popular on this six-game slate at 7,600. Depends on how the value goes and what opens up. But I like going to Terry Rozier at 7,600 right here. At the shooting guard. <coughs> Pardon me, guy. I'm going to look at Tyrese Maxey. Now, this is solely dependent on Harden being out. If Harden is out... I think they move Maxi into the starting lineup. They don't have to. They could still bring him off the bench, but there's no way he don't see 30-plus minutes with no James Harden, regardless of whether he starts or come off the bench, man. I'm okay with Max. I actually hope he come off the bench because then people are not going to play him, but he's still going to get 30-plus minutes if James Harden is out. I'm going to love getting the Tyrese Maxi at 6,100. Come at small forward. If uh, Donovan Mitchell is out, you can go right back to Levert. You can go right back to Garland. Put him in the same lineup again if you want to. It does not matter. If Donovan Mitchell is out, Levert and Garland are always in play. Now, coming in at the power forward spot, we want to look at Tari Eason. Now, Jabari Smith for the Houston Rockets is questionable. We, I'm pretty sure Kevin Porter Jr. is still out. He has a questionable tag on him, but it, it, it's looking doubtful for him. Jabari Smith is questionable. If he misses, now they could go uh, – uh, they could bring Jay Sean Tate in there. I don't know. But Tari Eason has been seen around 20 to 25 minutes. I don't know if he jumps into the starting lineup, but I do expect the boost in his minutes. I expect him to approach 30 minutes as well if Jabari Smith is out. So this is solely contingent on Jabari Smith playing or not. But Tari Eason at 3,700, Jabari Smith is out. I think it could be a very, very solid value play. It's going to garner some ownership too if Jabari Smith misses, but I think he's solid enough. As long as the ownership doesn't get too crazy, I'm okay with going there. Then at the center, you probably tired of saying him. I know he didn't fail you the last couple of times, but if Gobert is out again, you can go right back to Nas Reed. Listen, I know, I know. The first two times he got in foul trouble, I get it. I, you might not want. He might have burned you the first two games, but. Go right back to him, trust me, because if he does not get in foul trouble, he is going to smash. He's going to destroy this 5100 price tag if Gobert's out and he doesn't get in foul trouble, man. Go right back to Nas Reed. I'm hoping everybody off of him this go around. I'm hoping some other value over there, nobody really want to play him, but I doubt it, man. People know how good Nas Reed is as far as uh, fantasy production-wise, so. There you have it, man. You're starting five on DraftKings. Terry Rozier, Tyrese Maxey, Karis LeVert, Tari Eason, and Nas Reed. Let's go look at FanDuel, see what I'm feeling over there. At the top, I'm just staying with Terry Rozier. 8,100, man. Just, <coughs> excuse me. He's going to have every opportunity to do it. I I'm I don't I'm not even worried about it. It's just whether he does it or not. He's gonna probably shoot this ball twenty five, maybe more times with no Lamelo ball. It's no Lamelo ball. It's no 
Kelly Oubre. There's no Gordon Hayward. There's nobody to stop him from getting whatever shot he wants. He's going to shoot this ball 25-plus times. I, I ain't going to guarantee it, but I'm pretty confident in that. And if he shoots well, man, he's going to crush this 8100 price tag. I like getting the Terry Rozier here in this spot. At the shooting guard, stand with Tyrese Maxey, 6K, a little $100 discount, man. I just broke down. He should see big minutes if James Harden is out. That's what we're waiting on for this play right here. But he's going to be a lock and load if Harden is out. At the small forward. Now, I want to look at Jay Sean Tate over here on this side. I'm fan to Price is a little closer over here. Uh, Easton's a little more expensive. I think it's like 4200 4300 over here. So, I'm, I might take a chance on Jay Sean Tate over here because I don't know who it's going to be. Like I said, once we get that starting lineup, I can adjust. But... I think putting one of these guys in there at similar price, it can just help you because they both have uh, similar positional eligibility. So you can just put in whichever one you think is going to be, probably the more expensive one. And then when, once you get the news of who's actually starting, you can just put make sure to put that person in your lineup. All right? So it's a lock in Tate here. Uh, Easton's like $200 expensive. So if Tate starts, we're good. But if he doesn't, it's Easton. We're just going to rotate and put Easton in there. That's how you play that game tomorrow. All right? Now at a power forward, I want to look at P.J. Washington. LaMelo Ball opening up. Is, I mean, being out is going to open up a lot of uses for other guys. Rozier can't get it all. So I think some of it can fall in the laps of P.J. Washington and uh, McDaniels as well. Just other guys who can score and get their own shot. So I like looking at P.J. Washington. I like a little McDaniels as well if you want to go that route, man. A lot of these uh, Hornets guys are going to be in play with no LaMelo ball. But give me P.J. Washington, 6,500 right here. Hopefully he can get it cooking, performing how he was in the first part of the year before Melo was out. That's what really got me looking at P.J. Washington. Before, you know, before Melo came back and showed us something, used, P.J. Washington was playing very solid, very, very solid. So hopefully he, he, get, he can get back to that form with no Melo here at 6,500. And then Ryan Lighter Center, he's a thousand dollar, well nine hundred more expensive on FanDuel, but still, just play Nas Reed, man. Just play Nas Reed. I know it hurt. You probably say I ain't playing him again. Forget him. He didn't kill me twice. That ain't how DFS work, man. Put him back in your lineup. He is going to smash if Gobert's out and he stays out of foul trouble. You fade him if you want to. You're gonna wish you had him. All right. But there you have it, man. My starting five for FanDuel. Nas Reed, P.J. Washington, Jay Sean Tate, Tyrese Maxey, and Terry Rozier. Get you some exposure to these guys. Get them in your player pools, man. They definitely going to be in mind. That's going to do it for us here today. Y'all already know the motto, man. Chances make champions. Y'all green up. I'm going to catch y'all next time, all right? Let's get it.